All right, so now we're live on Facebook. So good evening, everyone. Good evening, IFNG. Good evening, Elite Squad. So tonight, we'll be having the part two of our grammar lecture from Sir Queen, a.k.a. Mother Dragon. So Mother Dragon, hello. I think I was on mute. Hello, guys. Philippines. Energy brought to you by Unlimited Energy by Mama Dragon. Okay, so how's everybody doing? Thank you so much, Mom Gladys, for that introduction. Yeah, we were actually talking earlier at the at the room. Okay, so let me just say hello to our viewers for tonight. Okay, so I know that you guys have learned a lot on your uh, discussion last week. Yeah, when it comes to grammar and tonight, we are so happy again to be here live at IFNG to discuss about grammar part two. Okay, so let me just drink water because, you know, drink your water. I'm thirsty. Okay, so guys, yes, last week we discussed about grammar and I trust and believe that you guys have learned a lot when it comes to that discussion. And this week, okay, or tonight, we're going to be discussing more as regards grammar. Okay, so yeah, tonight we're going to be covering not just the basics of grammar, but we will be covering the tenses, you know, your favorite, right, tenses. You also have punctuation usage at the end of the program. If you are a type, if you are, okay, let me just check my audio, guys. Okay, so if you are the type of student who is, uh, what do you call this, who is quite confused when it comes to uh, using your punctuations like your, your, your comma and of course your semicolon, then this, uh, this evening you will be learning that. I promise you that, okay? So let me just say hello to our viewers here at Zoom and of course our viewers on Facebook. Hello, Cardi, Ati, Genji, Mimi. Hello, hello everyone. Felix right there. And of course, for our viewers on Facebook, okay, Maya Devera. Hello. Good evening, Maya. Marjolin. Yen and Amen Sheng. Gising lahat ng kapit ba? Yeah, the neighbors are awake because of my noise. Thank you so much, Jaira, my love. Okay, guys, don't forget the official hashtag for tonight on our. Uh, what do you call this comment section right there at, at IFNG Live, which is hashtag Mama D Care. Okay, so wait, let me just check. Okay, guys, so let's start with your discussion for tonight, which is Grammar for IELTS Masterclass Part 2. Okay, so yeah, be prepared to uh, drink divalproic sodium, ganyan, carbamazepine, all of the anticonvulsants. <laughs> Because our discussion tonight is not a joke, believe me. But I trust you, I believe, guys, that you are going to be learning a lot. Because tonight, first on our grammar rules is that I will be discussing about uh, the tenses, okay? Who wouldn't want to learn about the tenses? Okay, guys, so if it's your first time to join us here at our IFNG Live, hello, representing Elite Intellect 9 Philippines! Blessed to be here. My name is Clint Joseph Tyler, the founder and master lecturer of Elite Intellect IELTS Specialist PH. I am a PHRN and a USRN, as well as, of course, an IELTS expert for the past 11 years. I have a degree in English Methodology and Theory and doctorate degree in English Language and Literature. Your mother dragon, mama dragon, mother D, mama D, mommy D. <laughs> and of course, I am half Filipino, half diwata ng kagubatan. <laughs> Energy. Okay, guys. So, wait lang. Let me calm myself down because I'm too energetic again. <laughs> Okay, guys, so <clears throat> let's start. Now, before we begin, guys, let's talk about the word of the day. Okay, word of the day before our lesson, most important lesson first, is that because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and donor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. This is the word of the Lord that can be found on Psalms 91, verse 14 to 16. If you are a type of person who sets your love upon the Lord, then of course, you don't need anything else in this life. Everything shall be added to you automatically by our uh, our Lord. Okay, so guys, God bless you all. Blessed evening to everyone. I am happy to be sharing to you our expertise when it comes to grammar. All right, so let's begin. <clears throat> Verb tenses. Oh my God, Sir Joseph. <laughs> Did you know that I am limited to past, present, and future? Yeah. 
All I know is past, present, and future. And that's totally fine, guys, okay? That is totally fine if your knowledge when it comes to grammar is a little bit limited to past, present, and future tense. Okay, but tonight I will be teaching you all the 12 tenses. Yes, the 12 tenses. So without further ado, let's begin. Okay, so verb tenses first, okay? By far, one of the conundrums of the students in the IELTS examination is selecting the proper verb tense. Noticeably, this is not limited to just past, present, and future. I will be teaching you about the 12 types of tenses that you may use on the IELTS examination. Okay, so if you're a student who is limited to past, present, and future, tonight don't worry, you will have a lot of ammunition when it comes to the tenses. Okay. <clears throat> So, uh, from Anna, 12 pala ang tenses, mother kashuk. Yes, guys, there are 12 tenses. But the other tenses, guys, are just subcategorizations of the first three. You look fabulous. Oh, thank you so much, Jaira Anak. Okay, <clears throat> so let me just cough that out. I think I have I have been holding back so, so much by coughing that out. <laughs> With coughing that out, rather. Okay, so let's begin. Let's take a look at the first tense, okay? Simple, future tense okay when we say simple future tense guys your signifier to know that that is simple future tense is there's the word will and shall plus the base form of the verb okay if you have seen in the sentence will or shall and then the verb is on the base form when we say base form let's say eat okay sleep there you go drink dance there you go then that is the simple future tense Okay, so here's an example. She will take her IELTS test in September. Okay, what else? She shall learn the IELTS in August. Okay, there you go. Now, the next type, okay, is what we call the future progressive tense. Oh my God, Sir Joseph, I thought that was just present progressive. We also have a future progressive. Yes, there's a future progressive tense, guys. Okay, so when we say future progressive tense, your signifier for this one is there is the word will be or shall be plus the verb is on the ing form. Okay, again, will be plus shall be plus the verb is on the ing form. Will be taking, will be eating, shall be learning. There you go. If you have seen that, then that automatically qualifies it to become a future progressive tense. Okay, so here's an example. She will be taking the IELTS exam in September. There we go. Okay, good evening, everyone. You may share this lecture to your friends and family who will be taking the exam. Let's make this trend. Mama D cares. Okay, yes, guys, please do share this because this is a very useful lecture. Okay, uh, one of the strongest foundations that the students could use on the examination, apart from Mac and L'Oreal, huh? Foundation. <laughs> One of the strongest foundations the students could use on the examination is, of course, grammar. Yeah, grammar, vocabulary, there you go. And we're going to be tackling grammar for you guys tonight, okay? All right, so what else? So these are the first two tenses, okay? You have simple future tense and future progressive tense. So what's the next one, guys? Okay. Uh, she shall be reviewing at Elite Intellect soon. Oh, believe me, after the new, after the program that's going to be returning at Elite Intellect this week that I will tell you later on, <laughs> I will see you in class very soon. Okay. Yeah. Some of my, some of my lecturers are very much excited about this one. It's because this program is um, quiet for how many months? Because we have students enrolled for this program. If you are a student enrolled for this program, you know what this program means. So, okay, so later on, I will tell you about it. Okay, guys, so <clears throat> going back, future perfect tense, okay? So when we are talking about future perfect tense, guys, okay, your signifier for this one is it has the word will have plus the past participle of the verb, okay? Again, it has the word will have plus the past participle of the verb. Okay, so an example of this one is the examiners will have finished checking the papers in five days. Again, the examiners will have finished checking the papers in five days. Joseph will have finished discussing in five hours. <laughs> No, don't worry, guys. I will not take five hours on our discussion tonight. Do not worry because our grammar discussion is compressed. Okay, it's compact, all right? All of the important information I have, what do you call this, summarize them for you guys to learn tonight. Okay, so 
So that is the future of future perfect tense, guys. One thing that I would want you to remember if you're talking about the future perfect tense, okay, is for you to write down will have plus the past participle of the verb. Okay, while I'm checking on our viewers here, could you please give me an example of future perfect tense? Okay, a sentence using future perfect tense. Come on, guys, you can do this. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Energy brought to you by Monster Energy Drink and Katas ng Fairy Essentials. <laughs> okay. All righty, so I'm just checking on our students here. All righty. <clears throat> okay, guys. All right. So, what else? Oh, thank you so much for typing hashtag Mama D cares. That's our, our official hashtag for tonight. All right. So, moving on, guys. The next type of tense is what we call the past perfect progressive okay so when you say past perfect progressive guys it is an action way in the past that continued longer also in the past this is this is what we call past is past <laughs> this is the test that we call psp okay what's that psp past is past okay past perfect progressive what does it mean when we say past per perfect progressive it is an action that is way in the past and then it continued however it is not it did not continue towards the present it continued still in the past okay so your signifier for this one is the word had been not have been because that's a different one had been plus the ing form of the verb okay again had been plus the ing form of the verb. Okay, so here's an example when it comes to this one, guys. Okay, so first one is she had been reviewing for two months before she passed the IELTS a month ago. Okay, so how many months did she review in the past? Okay, two months, right? When did she pass? A month ago, still in the past. That's why it's past is past. Okay, so like your exes, you know, girl, past is past, okay? Y'all don't go after the man right there. Y'all let the man run after you, girl. Charin. Susunod nga, ano? Magmukbang kaya ako habang ano, no? Habang nagdi-discuss dito. <clears throat> that was a crazy idea of mine earlier. <laughs> is that the next time that I discuss here at IFNG, I will mukbang myself while... Mukbang myself. I will mukbang while... Uh, what do you call this? <laughs> Discussing for <laughs> the IELTS exam <laughs> or the IELTS review. Oh, brainy. <laughs> Let's do that. I will eat all the social food, you know, all the social food, like um, my favorites, like the social food. Um, I don't know if I can pronounce it correctly. I'm so sorry. Um, Isao. There you go, Betamax. There you go. Naku, just ko, mga favorite ko. Woo! Barbecue mukbang, Mr. M. O. M. J. All of those are ketogenic. Don't you worry. So it's fine. I will do it. <laughs> okay, so. <clears throat> okay, so you have to remember if that is past perfect progressive, just remember PSP. Past is past. Okay, all things in the past. All right, so again, your signifier here is the word had been plus the ing form of the verb. So. An example is she had been reviewing for two months before she passed the IELTS a month ago. Let's say she has been trying to get pregnant for two years before she be, before she concepted last week. There you go. So it's still in the past. Okay. That is PSP or also known as past is past. Okay. Moving on. <clears throat> The next one, guys, is what we call the present perfect progressive, okay? For present perfect progressive, guys, an action in the past that continued at present, okay? Again, this is an action in the past that still continued at present. So here's an example of this one. Uh, the first thing that you have to look for in a word or a sentence to form this is the word has been or have been plus the ing form of the verb. Let's say have been discussing. There you go. <clears throat> or has been learning. There you go. So here's an example. The admins have been abiding the students for two years now. Okay, so look at that, right? The abiding of the, of the admins with the students started two years ago and still is continuing at the moment. That is what we call present perfect progressive. 
Okay, have been plus the ing form of the verb. Let's say Joseph has been teaching the IELTS examination or the IELTS review for 11 years now. So I have been teaching for the past 11 years and still it's continuing on today. All right, so what else, guys? <clears throat> the next one is what we call the future perfect progressive. Okay, so what do we mean by future perfect progressive? Okay, so the action will be completed in the future. This is something that happens in the future or shall be completed in the future. Your signifier is, this is quite unique because your main signifier for this one is, there's the word will have been, okay? Will have been, okay? Plus the ing form of the verb. All right, so here's an example. The student will have been reviewing for two months by the time she passed the test. Again, the student will have been reviewing for two months before she passed the test. Okay, so, uh, Sir Joseph, seizuring, right? Why is it important for me to learn these, Sir Joseph? Because, my love, that's a part of your grading criteria. You have to have commendable grammatical capacity, okay? If you're limited to past, present, and future, don't expect that you're going to be getting a 7.0 or 7.5 or an 8.0 or 8.5 on your examination. That's how it works, okay? So I want you to learn this. Sir, can I take a screenshot of this one? Yes, you may, but guys, later on, I will be sending you the Elite Notes version of this one, like the one that Mom Gladys has sent you last time, okay? So yeah, I will be sending you the Elite Notes version. It is what you call this, the summarized version of our discussion tonight, noted personally by your mama D. So pardon and excuse my penmanship because I'm a dragon. Hello, I have three fingers. <laughs> Does dragon have three fingers? I think that's T-Rex, right? <laughs> dragon and T-Rex. See, indeed, mama D cares. Okay, yeah. T-Rex, how many fingers does a dragon have? I know I'm looking at mine, I have five, but how many fingers does a dragon have? I think they have three. All right, fine, I don't know, I give up. Okay, so, all right, so your signifier, guys, with future perfect progressive is the word will have been plus the ing form of the verb, okay? Let's say um, <clears throat> Tanya will have been reviewing for her NCLEX for Five months by the time she passed the test. There you go. Okay, so <clears throat> what else, guys? Past perfect tense. Okay, so nothing in your past is perfect, but then again, we have to learn from it. Oh, who go? Who go 101? Okay, guys. Four fingers, mother, sabi ni Google. Oh, dragon is four fingers. So they don't have thumbs. <laughs> oh, that's why I love to claw things around. Okay, <clears throat> so guys, when, when that is a past perfect tense that we're talking about, it's just the word had plus the ed form or the past form of the verb. Okay, this is something that happened specifically in the past. Okay, again, for past perfect tense, this is something that happened specifically in the past. Okay, so here's an example. Gladys had mastered the IELTS last year. So when did, when did Mom Gladys master her IELTS exam? Last year. Okay, Marvin had helped many students last year. So when did Sir Marvin help students? It was a specific time in the past, which is last year. Jeffrey had guided the students last month. So when did Sir Jeffrey guide the, when did Sir Jeffrey guide the students? It is last month. If there is a specific time in the past, then of course that is what we call the past perfect tense. An example is um Joseph had ovulated last month. Oh my God, I, I did. I did. <laughs> okay, so from, IL, from IFNG, good evening, everyone. You may share this lecture to your friends and family who will be taking the exam. Let's make hashtag mama D cares. Yes, guys, come on. Let's make hashtag mama D cares. All right. Ah, puro thumbs up. Lang po ata sila mama. Di ba yung mga dragon? Diba? Paano kayo four fingers? No, no thumb at all. Okay. <clears throat> so, 
Moving on, guys. Okay? Next one, apart from past perfect tense, it's different from the simple past tense. Okay? When you say simple past tense, there's no had. Okay? It's just the past participle of the verb. Okay? An action that is in the past which is closer to the present. Okay? You cannot say 10 years ago. Okay, because that's too far from the present. It's usually last yesterday, this morning, two hours ago, last month, last week. There you go. So here's an example. Joseph prepared grammar notes two hours ago. Okay, so prepared is our uh, past participle of the verb here. Okay, what else? Zaya taught the students this morning. Okay, so when did Zaya... Uh, when did they uh, conduct, the, conduct the class? It was this morning. Okay. Oh, sir. The past tense of teach is taught. I thought taught it. <laughs> I could then. I thought when I was younger, I thought the past tense of thought is taught it. You know? When, it, when the, you are wrong grammarer. Okay? If you are the one who's committing uh, grammatical errors. What? What do you call somebody who teaches? Right? So it is a teacher. Right? So if you are a student who is committing wrong grammar, you are a wrong grammarer. <laughs> Wale, direct pa edit out. Direct edit out, please. Okay, guys. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Ayan na naman. Sige, Joseph. Tas na naman ang tama mo, girl. Okay, so next one, guys. Let's talk about past progressive tense, okay? So, when we say past progressive tense, guys, it is something that, is, that happens in the past. However, it was interrupted. Okay? So, your signifier for past progressive tense is there is the word was and were. Again, was and were. How do you pronounce that again, Sir Joseph? Were. Were. You don't pronounce it as where. Okay? Because where is different. Where is nasaan. Okay? Whereas if that was were in the past, you're going to pronounce it as were. Okay, pronounce it with me. One, two, three, go. Were. Right? Okay. I were. Okay. They were. Okay. <clears throat> so for the past progressive tense, guys, it is an action in the past. However, it was interrupted by something. Okay, so here's an example. I was watching a movie before they arrived. So what's the action that was interrupted there? It was the speaker watching a movie. They were studying before the lecturer joked. Okay, so what was <clears throat> what was the thing that interrupted them there? It was the joke of the lecturer. Okay, so if you're going to be looking at that for past progressive tense, guys, it is something that <laughs> happens in the past that has been interrupted. Okay, so that's past progressive tense. All right, moving on. Let's take a look at the next one. We call this the simple present tense. Okay, so when we say simple present, pres present, <laughs> when we say simple present tense, ba? When you say simple present tense, it is something that is that is repetitive or habitual actions. It is usually on the present form of the verb. Okay, again, it is a repetitive or habitual action and is usually on the present form of the verb. Here's an example, guys. I teach the IELTS. Okay, so me teaching the IELTS, is it something habitual? Yes, yes, I teach the IELTS every single day, except for Sundays, because that's my time to bond with the Lord, right? Okay, they review for the IELTS. Do you review every single day? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Okay, so if you're going to be looking at that, guys, um, simple present tense is something that is habitual. Let's say I eat French fries all the time. Oh, French fries. French fries plus iho iho. French fries plus iho iho plus fried chicken plus Brasso de Mercedes. Brasso de Mercedes plus ube pandesal plus ube jam from Baguio City. Oh my gosh. Plus viscos the cake. Ah, plus chonas the light. Um, plus um, kikiam, fish balls, squid balls, isaw, betamax, adidas, helmet. What, Sir Joseph, why are you always hungry? I don't know. <laughs> My God. 
What's my appetite? Okay, stop mother. Nakakaguto. Ugh. Tama na ba, Magun? Gutom na naman against. <laughs> oh my gosh. <coughs> Sir Jello, please remind me to buy, ano, uh, Brasso de Mercedes tomorrow. Yes. I wish I could buy. I mean, most of the shops in my area are closed right now because of the new restrictions. Okay, so. What else? What else are your usual cravings? Guys, that's lalabob na yung bar because ako, yes, correct, Mr. M. Lo? Baka naglili. Oh my God, guys. Hi, Libin. Oh my God, guys. Is it possible that your mama is pregnant? That's why I've been craving a lot of things. There's a baby dragon baking in the oven. Good job. Y'all going to be uh, godmothers and godmothers of this little dragon inside the butt, inside the oven. <laughs> uh, guys, on my christening, minimum of 1,000 for Ninong and Ninong. Sorry. <laughs> Imagine my son when he comes out. And I claim he's a son, okay? Imagine my son when he comes out of my womb and then the doctor slaps him. Right? For him to cry, my son will be like, uh-uh, now, y'all, y'all did not do that to me, okay? That thing right there is quite atrocious, all right? Don't you know, doctor, that that was deleterious for young children or juveniles like myself? I'm an infant. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay, moving on. <clears throat> All right, the next one, guys, is what we call the present progressive tense, okay? So when we say present progressive tense, it is happening now and then it's progression, okay? It's currently happening and then it's going to keep on happening in the future, okay? Here's an example. It is just the verb plus the ing form. It is just the ing form of the verb, okay? So here's an example. I am teaching a class at the moment. So it is? Progressive. Currently, I am teaching a class and it's progressing at the moment. Okay, what else? She is reviewing for the IELTS now. There you go. So that is present progressive, guys. Is it something that denotes progression? Okay, it is usually in the present. And of course, you're going to be adding the word I, uh, the ing on the verb for, so as to ensure that you are forming the present progressive tense. Okay, so what else, guys? The next one is... There are two types of present perfect tense, okay? This is present perfect tense one. Okay, so what is present perfect tense one? Okay, it is an action with indefinite time in the past. So there's no specific time, okay? So it's just the word have plus the past participle of the verb. Okay, so here's an example. I have seen this place before. Okay, so there's no specific time, right? I there's no uh, there's no there's nothing in there that says I have seen this place last year, right? So if that is per present perfect tense one, there's no specific time. I have seen this place before. What else? I have thought I have I have thought of this before. There you go. So in a simple, in more simple terms, guys, when we are talking about present perfect tense, then it is something that happened in the past. However, there's no specific time in the past. Whereas the second one is what we call the present perfect tense part two. Okay, so what is the present perfect tense part two? It is an event that started in the past and continued in the present. Okay, it is something that, that happened in the past and continued in the present. Your signifier for present perfect tense part two is has been, okay, plus the ing form of the verb. Also, you can use have been plus the ing form of the verb. Here's an example. <clears throat> Joseph has been teaching the IELTS since 2010. There you go. So let's say Joseph has been, has been um, Mary has been learning the IELTS since last year. There you go. Okay. What else? The students have been learning the IELTS since earlier today. There you go, guys. So that is what we call the present perfect tense too. Okay, so just a recap, guys. What are the types of tenses that I have taught you this evening? Okay, so the first one you have simple future tense, future progressive tense, future perfect tense, past perfect progressive, present perfect progressive, future perfect progressive, past perfect tense, simple past tense, past progressive tense, simple present tense, present progressive tense, Present perfect tense one and present perfect per per perfect tense two. Total 13 tenses if you're going to be counting present perfect tense one and two. 
But in total, it's just 12, okay? Including present perfect tense. So, yeah. Um, Sir Joseph, should I be using this on the exam? Yes. Your examiners are highly impressed when you are saying things like, well, I will have been finished. Oh. I will have been finished by now if I did not, uh, if I did not, if I did not stop my course. Right? Okay, what else? Well, my mother is a person that I admire the most because she has been teaching on the private institution since 2009. There you go. So when you are asked something on the exam, you can use the present perfect tense. Plus, guys, you can also use it with writing. Okay, especially with writing. They're very big when it comes to the tenses in your writing. Because for speaking, it's not noticeable when you commit a tense error. However, with writing, they can see that it's in writing form. Okay, now guys, stick to the end of the program because before we end later on, I will be teaching you guys how to use punctuations. Comma, semicolon. Uh, Sir Joseph, are we required to use semicolon in the exam? No, but if you know how to use it, it's an advantage. Yeah, if you know how to use a semicolon, it is an advantage for you. Okay, so yes, yeah, stick to the other program. I will teach you later on and how to use commas and semicolons. Easy way to remember. Okay, now moving on. <clears throat> Let's take a look at the clauses, okay? So there are two types of clauses, guys, okay? The first one is what we call an independent clause. Okay, so an independent clause, guys, is a group of words that contains a subject and a verb, and it expresses a complete thought, okay? So here's an example of an independent clause. Look at that. Marvin studied in the library for his quiz. Have you understood everything that Marvin did at that Marvin did at that time? Yes, he studied where library for what his quiz. What did he do? Studied who Marvin. So if that sentence forms a coherent thought, then that is already considered as an independent clause. Sir, why is it important for me to learn dependent and independent clause? Believe me, later on when we talk about punctuations, you will use them. Okay, so remember independent and dependent clause. Okay, what else? <clears throat> Jeffrey went to Cambridge for college. Okay, so who? Jeffrey, what happened? Went, where? Cambridge, for what? College. When all of these things are complete within one sentence, that could be considered an independent clause. Okay, let's say Zaya, uh, Zaya, ate some, uh, Zaya ate some bread this afternoon. Okay, so who ate Zaya? Okay, what did she do? She ate what? Bread. When? This afternoon. If those are complete, okay, in a sentence, then automatically that could be considered as an independent clause. It's easy to note independent clause. Just ask yourself, huh, is this sentence conveying complete information? If it is, then it's an independent clause. It can stand on its own. However, the next one is a little bit tricky. We call her the dependent clause, okay? So this one is a, the clingy version of a girlfriend that wouldn't let the boyfriend play Axie or um, Mobile Legends because she clingy, okay? So here's an example. Okay, by definition, guys, dependent clauses is a group of words that contains a subject and a verb but does not express a complete thought, Basically, your signifier for the dependent clause is a dependent clause cannot be a sentence and is usually marked by dependent markers. Okay, when the sentence starts with dependent markers, they could be considered as dependent clauses. Now, Sir Joseph, what are the dependent markers that you're talking about? Here you go. These are the common dependent markers. Okay, when? When I went to college, what happened? There you go. After I ate, what happened? Right? Although, as or as if, because, but before, even if, even though, if, in order to, since, though, unless, until, however, okay? Oh, until, whatever, when, whenever. Wherever we're meant to be together, I'll be there and you'll chitting. <laughs> Whether, while, however, also, consequently, furthermore, 
Okay. Moreover, however, subsequently, nevertheless, therefore, hence, thus, and the fanboys. Who are the fanboys? You have for and nor or but yet so. Right? Fanboys. Okay. For and nor but or yet and so. These are your fanboys. So guys, look at this. Look at this. Okay? Let's take a look at this one, guys. Okay? If you're going to be looking at this one right here. Sorry, guys. Let me just catch my breath. Hold on. Okay. <clears throat> so... Me laughing. Oh my God! Okay, so if you're going to be looking at this one, guys, look at the dependent markers, okay? I'm sorry, okay? I am so sorry. I apologize in advance. If you are a student, when you're writing an essay and you start the sentence of a paragraph with furthermore, moreover, consequently, subsequently, you're making the first sentence of your paragraph a dependent clause. And that's not correct. Never, ever start a paragraph with furthermore, moreover, subsequently, consequently, because when you do that, you are making the first sentence of your paragraph a dependent clause. And that's usually incorrect. Okay, each first sentence of your paragraph should be a complete thought. It should be an independent clause. Okay, so never ever start your paragraphs with these because you're making it dependent clauses. Okay, so fun thing to remember, if the sentence starts with these, automatically it is a dependent clause and it does not have a complete idea at all. Here's an example. Hence, explaining why he is in, infuriated. Who is infuriated? What's the situation? Right? What else? Subsequently, he followed the advice. What advice? Right? Both of these sentences are incomplete in thought and they cannot stand on their own. Okay? That's not, I did not make that. This is the grammar rule right here. Never ever start a paragraph with dependent markers, okay? The dependent markers should be in the middle of the paragraph, not in the beginning of the paragraph. That's basically it. That's one thing that I would want you guys to remember here, okay? These are connectors. You can, sir, can I use connectors in the beginning of the paragraphs? Yes, you can use connectors, right? What are the connectors that you can use? But you need to transition first. Another point worth noting is that's a connector, okay? Finally, that's a connector. However, if you're going to be using although, nevertheless, in the beginning of the paragraph, you just made the first sentence a dependent clause. There, my friend, we're going to be having a problem if you're going to do that. All right? Okay. So what else, guys? Both these sentences are incomplete in thought. Okay? So you have to remember, dependent and independent. Again, why is it important for me to remember dependent and independent clause? Because later on, when I teach you about punctuation, you need to find the dependent and independent clause for you to know where to place the comma, for you to know where to place the semicolon. So it's important for you to learn dependent and independent clause. Okay. All right. Moving on. Philippines. <laughs> Let's take a look at singular and plural subjects. Okay. A lot of students are a little bit confused when it comes to singular and plural subjects. Sometimes Okay, why is it important, Sir Joseph, for me to learn singular and plural subjects? Because without knowing this, you will have an onerous time with subject-verb agreement. Did you remember our discussion last week? I have taught you about subject-verb agreement. If that's a singular subject, it would take a singular verb. If that is a plural subject, it would take a plural verb. So how will you know what verb we would need to complement on the noun or the subject if you don't even know what a singular and plural subject is. Okay, so let's take a look. Just remember it this way. Singular, one. Plural, many. Okay, 
Now, here are, unfortunately, some of the common mistakes of the students when it comes to singular and plural. Okay? Look at this one. The singular form is person. The plural form is people, not persons. What, Sir Joseph? I saw it on the elevator. Limit 10 persons only. Guys, there's no such word as persons. Okay? It should be 10 people. Okay? Because persons, apostrophe S, is possessive. No? Yon, there's such word as that. However, where well, there are 10 persons in my event, that's not a word. That's not a word, my love. Okay? And unfortunately for me, it took me... It took me how many years? I'm already on my doctorate degree on English language and literature when I have when I found out that the plural of people, the person is people, not persons. So there's no such word as persons. Okay. What else? Plural form of fish? Fish. Okay. Singular of data is datum. Plural is data. Criterion for singular, criteria for plural. Medium for singular, media for plural. Alumnus for singular, alumni for plural. Curriculum for singular, curricula for plural. Unfortunately, some students tend to write down, well, there are a lot of new curriculum. <laughs> A lot of new curriculum. Curriculum is just one. And you're denoting a lot. Right? So the proper term for that would be there are a lot of new curricula nowadays. Oh my gosh, Sir Joseph. I learned one thing again. Which is to say when you're saying a lot, okay, many then that's not curriculum, but rather that's curricula. Okay, what else? Phenomenon, phenomena. Phenomenon is one single instance, whereas phenomena is a lot of instances. Okay, so do not, I repeat, okay? Do not be confused with these common mistakes of the students when it comes to singular and Plural. Okay, so just what about medium and media? Let's say mass media. So you're talking about a lot of platforms, right? You're talking about a lot of platforms, okay? Whereas if there's just one medium, let's say I like looking at the, a medium, which is Facebook. It's just Facebook. So Facebook can be considered as a medium, not a media. Oh, so Sir Joseph, Facebook is a social medium, not a social media? Correct. Because social media, that's a lot of programs. Whereas Facebook should be considered as a social medium. The next time that you're talking to your examiner and the examiner asks you, what do you like doing on the internet a lot, right? Well, I love looking at a social medium, which is Facebook. You're talking about one, Facebook. So it's just medium. Oh, let's say, well, I like looking at social media, which is Facebook. What else? Because media is plural. Okay, medium is just one. Oh my gosh, Sir Joseph, I learned another new thing from you tonight. Apart from curriculum, there's also medium. Yeah. Unfortunately, guys, for datum and data, some students also tend to write down datas. Datas. There's no S for data, guys, okay? Because the singular for data is datum, okay? So one thing that I want you to take for, from this one is number one, social medium, Facebook. Social media, Facebook, YouTube, all the other types of social media, okay? Whereas curriculum, if there's one, but if there's a lot, then you say there are a lot of new curricula in my hometown. Oh, uh, by just doing that, you already improved your English capacity 10 times higher as compared to now. Ah, oh, congratulations guys for that. All right. This is so brilliant. Thank you. You're welcome, Maristella, my love. Okay. So yeah. Oh. Sir Joseph, you know what? I am guilty for always saying I love looking at social media, which is Facebook. 
Well, at least now you know my love, okay? I love looking at a social medium, which is Facebook. I love reading a social medium, which is the newspaper. I love watching a social me I, I, a medium. I love watching a medium, which is television. But if you're talking about television channels, then you're going to be using media. All righty, guys. Okay, so excuse me, guys. Give me three minutes. Okay, I'm I'm just going to I'm just going to quench my thirst. I'm just going to drink water, and then after that, we're going to move on to punctuation usage. Okay, punctuation is one thing that you wouldn't want to miss for the world. Okay, so Zaya, alumna, uh, alumna is actually also on the plural, but it's on the different. Uh, utilization, my love. Okay, so Zaya, other tips when it comes to grammar improvement for the students tonight. Hi, everyone. Hi, sir. So yes, yeah, since that we're talking about verbs and grammar, I think most of the students here have been having a hard time regarding the usage of infinitive or infinitives. I think, okay, there we go. So yes, now, they fail to use the correct verb form when they're using to. So now one tip that I should, that, that you guys should know. When you're using to, so the verb after that should be in its base form. So just like what Sir Joseph said, your base form should even have ES, S, I, N, G, D, or E, D. If it's eat, it's just eat. To eat to take like that and also um i think this is also for writing most of the people are having a hard time with how do i put this into words so, okay um she is driving and sh and eating okay you have to make your verbs parallel as much as possible almost the same with ing if the other one has ing the other verbs in that same sentence should have ing as well can you guys hear me i think somebody is telling me that uh they can't hear me how's my audio okay i think um hi hi Tess. okay so yes going back parallelism oh thank you so much mom gladys so yes um, for example, again, the verbs should be in the same form. She eats and sleeps. It's not she's sleeping. She is sleeping and eat because it sounds a bit off. So that's one thing that you should also take note when you are um, in your writing, not really tests. Oh, yes. Writing practices or in your tests proper. Uh, what else? utilization of your articles a uh, and the uh, the main difference between these two groups uh, is that um, you're on on you're using this if that certain person thing or place was not introduced beforehand for example um, there is this one person there is a person that I would love to to share to you okay you haven't introduced that person as of yet so that's why you, you're you're using here ah, a person a person now if you already introduce that to your uh introduce them to your interlocutor anna is my bosom friend she is the person that i would love to talk to every time i am down in the dumps as you can see there, the main difference. Okay, what else? I think most of you are having a hard time also with the usage of the difference between A and an, okay? Um, for A, you're using it for your consonants, of course. Um, and A is used for um, words that start with vowels, okay? Um, also, the main pitfall that I have been seeing, especially with writing, is that um, some of you guys um, sometimes forget that there are words that are pronounced as, uh, or the first, even if they start with consonants, you pronounce them as 
starting with a vowel, an hour, honest, honor. So you should use an instead of a. So these are very minute errors. However, it will make a difference if you actually know how to utilize these. I think Mother Dragon is now back. I'm very excited to hear more from her. So let me give back the floor to Mother Dragon. Thank you so much, Zaya, for that life-saving tips when it comes to grammar. Okay, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> also for alumna, it's a female. Okay, it's a female. We're talking about for alumna. I am so sorry. I took time to. I took long enough to drink water. Mm. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, Sir Joseph, what are you laughing at? Uh, I cannot share, unfortunately. <laughs> But Mom Gladys knows what what I'm laughing at. Okay, mm -hmm. all right, guys. So yeah, <clears throat> guys, be careful with these. Okay, when you are on the examination again, if I want you to remember for singular and plural, remember datum and data, alumnus, alumni, alumna, female. Okay, criterion and criteria. Okay, curriculum and curricula. Okay, why so long? Why so long, sir? Um, for drinking water, ba. <laughs> I am so sorry. You know what, guys? I drink. I drink like uh, what do you call this? I drink like uh, always a thirsty person. I don't know. Every that's. I think maybe I think that's my secret. Want to guess my age, guys? Come on, let's let's play a fun game first before we move on to the punctuations. Wow, you're a great teacher. Oh, thank you so much, Emmy. Emmy, <clears throat> want to guess my age, guys? Come on, type your type your guesses right there. How old do you think is Mama Dragon? Well, I'm a dragon, so it means I'm a I'm a thousand years old. I'm kidding. Twenty five, say. <laughs> That's too young. Riza, thirty higher. Mary Chris, thirty eight, almost there. Eighteen. Oh my God, jumps! You got it correctly. I'm eighteen. <laughs> No, guys, I'm turning 32. Okay, I'm turning 32. Huh? Yes, I'm turning 32 this August. I want to make a guess when. Okay, so I will not tell you. I will be celebrating. I will be celebrating here at IFNG. Okay, guys, so yeah. All right, guys, so yeah. One thing that I would want you... Yes, I'm a Leo. <laughs> why laughing? I know why. Why feel? <laughs> okay, so yeah, I'm a Leo too. Okay, my horoscope this morning is Le Leo. Have you seen Leia? <laughs> okay, guys. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys, for that bad happy birthday greeting. I think I'll be celebrating for an entire month. Okay, guys, so before we move on to the punctuations, let me just take this time to congratulate the baby dragons who passed their examinations this week. A blessed week it is, okay? So as you can see, guys, let me just congratulate Neil Angelo Camba, 7.5 in speaking, a registered nurse in the UAE, Sal D. Amara, 7.5 in speaking nurse, supervisor in the Philippines. We have Joshua Jules, Gerald uh, Sardilio, 7.0 in speaking. Okay, he's a nurse. Maria Lauren Samano Legaspi, 7.0 in speaking nurse in the Philippines. Mary J. Sipney, uh, Roque Toloza, Toloza, 7.0 in speaking registered nurse in the Philippines. Christina Vera Marie, 7.0 in speaking registered nurse in the Philippines. We also have Ayumi Grace Malvar, OET pastor nurse in the UAE. Joanne Araka Bling, OET pastor nurse in the Philippines. We have Rare Jow, Rare. Congratulations, Rare. Rare Jow, nurse in Japan. She's got it a 7.0 in speaking. Sherry Royce Kara, 7.0 in speaking nurse. Staff nurse in Qatar. Eliasha A. Angel Kabalag, 7.0 in speaking, staff nurse in the Philippines. We also have Julie Pearl um, Malinana, 7.0 in speaking, nurse in Abu Dhabi. And of course, our student pastors for Canada. Okay, we have Noel Roque. Okay, we have Ezra Joy Castro, Karina Manalastas, John Ian Gutierrez. These are students. Okay, you know how difficult it is to get a student score in Canada. So congratulations, guys. I am so happy. Thank you for working. And of course, congratulations to our new 19 USRNs from the Elite Intellect Batch 20 NCLEX Cluster. So yay! It, it, it was a blessed week. The Lord showered us with passers this week. Okay, guys. So... <clears throat> 
you will be the next passer. Our review program is coming back this week at Elite Intellect. Ready to go the extra mile? So a lot of people, a lot of students have been asking me, Sir Joseph, please give us a clue. What review program is reopening for Elite Intellect? Because you guys know here at Elite, when we open review programs, we don't just accept students. We have to make those two. We have to... We have to wait for those students to finish the program before we accept enrollees. And this one was last batch started in January. Okay, this is what we call Elite Extra. Okay, Elite Extra, guys, is if you are tired, okay? If you are tired of being defeated by the IELTS examination, it is time to go the extra mile. Elite Extra is one of our in-demand review programs which helps the students who took the exam before but did not get their target score. Elite Extra is for you. Hi, Bini Bini Carlos. Hello. If you are a student who took the examination before and unfortunately you did not get your target scores, then Elite Extra would be for you, which is a program of Elite Intellect 9. So we have 15 slots open, only 15. I am so sorry, guys. I cannot expand it to 20, even though I would really love to because I want to focus on those 15 students, okay? Why, Sir Joseph, what's difference? What's, what's different between Elite Extra and Elite Focus or Elite Ops, okay? For Elite Ops, guys, Elite Ops is for the students who are beginners or intermediates, Okay, whereas Elite Extra, these are the students who have taken the exam before, meaning they have already a background knowledge about the IELTS examination because this one right here has one-on-one -on -one mentoring. When we say mentoring, it's not coaching, mentoring. I will be with you, sitting with you for an hour for me to talk about the things that you should be doing on the exam. So what's our promo, guys, for Elite Extra? It is a limited review. Review even if your exam expires, maybe two years from now, come back. Okay, you don't have to pay anything. Speaking boot camps and refinement coachings, this is the difference between Elite Extra and Elite Ops, guys. Okay, Elite Extra is more focused on giving the student that extra push that they need for their examination. Also, we have unlimited one-on-one -on -one coaching and speaking and writing, live and recorded discussions, flexible schedules to accommodate students worldwide, of course. And of course, we have program designed to make you an advanced student. So if you're a student who is, mm, okay, I'm on a moderate, intermediate student, then after Elite Extra, you will become an advanced student. Guaranteed. Okay, so computer or mobile delivered mock test, the first in the Philippines with which our mock examinations are on computer. And of course, you can use your mobile phone to do your mock examinations. And of course, <clears throat> this is what separates Elite Extra from the, our other programs, which is one-on-one uh, -on -one mentoring with my Self. Okay, Mother Dragon, yes, it is mentoring and not just coaching. Elite Notes included with free preparation books. Sir Joseph, what is Elite Notes? Later on, I'll show you what Elite, Note, Elite Notes It is the colorful compilation that I did myself for my students for them to learn well. Okay, so we have an exclusive IFNG discount still for students who would want to enroll for Elite Extra. Instead of paying 6500 pay 4999 all included. Okay, so if you want to inquire for elite extra or save a slot for yourself because we only will be accepting 15 students please send a message on our facebook page right there if you're going to be looking at our chat box at zoom that is the facebook page of elite intellect night and of course at our um comment section on the facebook page that is our uh uh, at the live, that is our Facebook page for Elite Intellect Night. So you may send a message and tell Mom Tanya that you would want Elite Extra. You know what? A simple way to do this is just type um, Elite and then the name of an admin. Okay, let's say Elite Gladys, Elite Jeffrey, Elite Marvin, or Elite GL, Elite Deadpool, or Elite Mr. M. There you go. Type them, type them, send them to Mom. Uh, Tanya right there on our Facebook page and she will know what to do. Okay, so for those of you who will be at Elite Extra, let's go the extra mile with Mama Dragon and I'll see you in class very soon. Plus, guys, just a reminder, you can still make it. We still have our NCLEX plus IELTS promo available, unfortunately, up to this week only. Okay, so you would need to finish the cycle of our entire NCLEX before you can enroll. Okay, which is from 25000 you're only going to be paying 7999 That is for your NCLEX and IELTS review by one course, take one course, okay? So 
we will be accepting NPLEX plus IELTS and limited enrollees for this week only. So if you would want to inquire, please send a message on our Facebook page right now via the Zoom platform. Just click the link right there or click the link on the comment section right there on our live discussion. I'll see you in class very soon, my new children at Elite Intellect Line. Okay, so in Jesus' name, kayo nang susunod na babatiin ko dito ng congratulations. Alrighty, so moving on. Okay, wait. We have a PM, sir. What's the code again? Okay, Elite Gladys. Okay, Elite uh, Marben, Elite Jeffrey, or Elite GL. Okay, Elite uh, Deadpool, or Elite Mr. M. There you go. Mom Tanya will automatically know what to do with your inquiry. Okay, so thank you guys so much. I'll see you in class very soon. Now, let's learn how to learn how to use commas. Okay, a lot of students do not know how to use commas on the examination. Unfortunately, guys, did you know that when your you, when your essay okay is arranged using commas automatically you will get uh what do you call this an additional uh, not not score but you will you will be in the good light of the examiner so it is imperative for you guys to learn how to use commas properly and remember the magic seven of using commas okay so ano po yon? ah okay hold on uh, sir lloyd can i please have my ipad <clears throat> Uh, elite notes, guys. What does elite notes look like? Okay, here. Let me show you. Guys, this is the copy of the one that I will be sending the admins of IFNG later on. So if you would want to have a copy, please... Um, I think Mom Gladys will be sending it on your respective group chats at IFNG. So elite notes, guys. It looks like this one. Okay, so look at that. This is elite notes right here. Okay, so Elite Notes is uh, basically a personal note that I, a personal summarization note that I have made myself. Okay, for my students, okay, so look at that, all the tenses that we have discussed tonight is already here. Okay, and all the clauses are already here. We also have the common dependent markers, singular and plural, punctuations, the comma magic seven, and of course, the magic five for semicolons, they are already here. So I'll be sending this one to the admins of IFNG so that you guys have the PDF copy of Elite Notes. Okay, so yes, I'm excited for you to learn and master this one. Okay, so yes, that's included for Elite Extra. They have Elite Notes. Okay, so let us learn how to use commas. Okay, remember the magic seven of using commas. Okay, so what are the magic sevens? You're welcome, guys. You're welcome. All right. Hello, Mom Gladys. Gusto ko po sana mag ng speaking app. Oh, yes. Please message Mom Gladys on your uh, group chat for the speaking uh, application. All right. So use a comma to separate independent clauses. Oh, did you remember the independent clauses earlier? The independent clauses are sentences which can stand on their own. So use a comma before a coordinating conjunction. What are coordinating conjunctions? These are your fanboys. For, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. When it joins to complete ideas. Okay, so here's an example. <clears throat> he walked down the street, comma, and then he turned to the corner. Again, he walked down the street, independent clause, comma, and then he turned to the corner. There you go. What else? You can go shopping with me. That's an independent clause, comma, or you can watch a movie, semi, uh, comma, uh, period. Okay, so if there are two independent clauses, guys, that is connected by fanboys, they're separated by a comma only. No? And sir, what if I remove the fanboys? Let's say and chaka yung or. I remove them. So what should I what can I replace them with? Then that's no longer a comma, that's a semicolon. Later on, I'll teach you how to do that. Okay. Now, again, first rule for the magic seven is for using commas, use the comma to separate independent clauses. If they're connected by fanboys. Okay, so there's always a comma in between. Now, what's the next one? Use a comma after an introductory clause. Okay, so a comma, a comma tells readers that the main sentence is about the, to follow the introductory 
phrase. Again, a comma tells readers that the main sentence is about to follow the introductory phrase. Okay, so here's an example. What's the introductory phrase here? Here, when Evan was about to graduate, that's an introductory phrase, comma, he perfected the subject. Okay, again, the introductory phrase is when Evan was about to graduate, comma, he perfected the subject. Okay, what else? Upon arrival, comma, Kiala studied the lessons. Upon arrival, Kiala studied the lessons. The introductory phrases here, guys, are the words with when, upon, there you go, after, there you go. And when that happens in a sentence, then there should be a comma there to complete the thought. Okay, this is rule, magic rule number two. Use a comma after an introductory clause. Okay, so what's the next one, guys? Use a comma between the items in a series, okay? You know that when you are defining something or you are enumerating something, there should be commas there. They are used to separate or enumerate a series, which is three or more items, okay? There are types of series. You have, hi, Sir Ching. Sir Ching is watching. Okay, so we have, let's say, we bought apples, comma, bananas, comma, oranges, and grapes. Okay, so these are series of words, right? Okay, whereas the next one are the series of phrases, guys, okay? Mary promised that she will be a good girl, comma, that she would not bite her brother, comma, and that she would not climb the television. So this is the series of phrases or clauses. This one is useful, guys, especially when you are making a long paragraph. You cannot just end this with a period every time in the paragraph. Like if you're imagining that on the IELTS, you will get your target scores by just writing down a sentence period, another sentence period, another sentence period, another sentence period, another sentence period without using a comma. That's not going to happen, guys. Okay. So yeah, when you are about to enumerate a series, something that took place or happened or items, I want you guys to use a comma to separate them. Okay, what else, guys? Use a comma to set off a positive, okay? What is an appositive, Sir Joseph? An appositive is a noun that renames the nearby noun. So if there's a nearby noun and then that thing or word is defining the noun, then that is an appositive. And I want you guys to set off with a comma. Okay, how about orange and grapes? For two items, Danica, you don't have to separate them with a comma anymore because that is not a series. Series are considered as three items and above, not two items. Okay, so, okay, so here's an example. Alexander Pope, the Restoration poet, is famous. Okay, so who is the noun there? You have Alexander Pope. The appositive there is he is the Restoration poet. Okay, what else? The New York Jets, the noun, the positive, the underdogs won the game. Okay, what else? Here's an example. Joseph, comma, the mother dragon, okay, comma, taught a class tonight. Okay, Joseph, comma, the mother dragon, comma, taught a class tonight. Okay, look at that. When there is a word. You're welcome, Danica, my love. When there is a word right there which describes the noun, okay, then of course that is considered as an appositive, okay? I want you guys to do that on the exam, okay? The president, comma, who is always focused, uh, who is known for his stringent ways, comma, won the war against drugs. There you go. So that's an appositive right there. You can use that on your examination. Mama D, kailangan po ba ng comma before end? Yes, if you're not ending the series. If you're not ending the series, Grace, then you, you have to write down an end with it. But if you're about to end the series, like let's say bananas, oranges, apples, and grapes, then you don't need the comma for that. But if there's a comma before an end, that's an Oxford comma. Even advanced rule with commas. Okay. So, what else, guys? Use a comma to indicate direct address, okay? When we say direct address, we're not talking about the location, okay? This is when the speaker names the audience, 
Okay? Then you need to use a comma. Let's say the speaker here is myself. I think, John, you are wrong. There you go. So who's wrong? John. Okay? What do I, what's my action? I think. Okay? So I think, comma, John, you are wrong. There you go. Jane, comma, I think you are smart. Jane, comma, I think you are smart. There you go. I think you got it correctly, Cora. I uh, Cora, comma, Mary. There you go. I think you got it correctly, comma, Mary. There you go. So if you're going to be looking at that, guys, when there is a direct address, the speaker is addressing the person, okay, then there should be always a comma with that one. Okay? All righty. Barack Obama, the president, comma, was famous among general public during office. Yeah, Raman Deep, very good. Okay. Napasok yung kapitbahay namin, Mama Gwan, si Cora. <laughs> kapitbahay niyo pala si Cora. Piling ko narinig ako ni Cora eh, kaya nagparamdam eh, nasabi ko tuloy eh. Hi, Cora! Okay. So yeah, this is the direct address as you would like to call. Okay, moving on. Use a comma to set off direct quotations, okay? If you are talking about quotes or quotations, there should be a comma before it, okay? Here's an example, guys. Let's take a look at this one, okay? Uh, when writing direct quotations, use a comma before or after the direct quote. Mary said, comma, quote, I dislike loud music, unquote. Okay, or I saw him, yes, quote, I saw him yesterday, unquote, uh, comma, unquote, Mary said. There you go. So if it is something that is quotational, guys, then I would want you to use a comma after it or before it. Okay, what else? Commas are used for dates, addresses, titles, and numbers. Okay, here's an example for dates. December 24, comma, 2021, comma, is Christmas Eve. There you go. Okay, what else, guys? <clears throat> Addresses, right? John Lennon was born in Liverpool, comma, England. Okay, for titles, Sarah Belinsky, comma, MD, comma, has been appointed. There you go. And of course, you also have number, right? 3,500, comma, 35, comma, thousand, 300, comma, thousand, 350 comma thousand, 3 million comma 500,000 comma, okay? 3 billion comma 500 million comma, right? So these are the things that we do or we use the commas for. You just have to remember the magic seven rule that mama taught you tonight when it comes to using commas, okay? All right, now breathe in guys. Let's go to semicolons. Ah! Sir Joseph, are we required to use semicolons on the exam? In a way, yes. <laughs> a little bit you're not. A little bit you're not, but it is always better if you know how to use semicolons. You know what? In my experience as a, as a test taker, I renewed my IELTS examination seven times. I renewed my IELTS examination seven times, okay? And all of those seven times, just once, I did not get an, a 9.0 in writing. I only got an 8.5. It's because I misused the comma. But all of the other six uh, experiences that I have had with the writing of the IELTS, guys, with which I got a 9.0, no, I, I always use semicolons. Okay, I always use semicolons to denote. Okay, I was listening, Mother. Kalaku, you are going to sing comma, 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 Camille. <laughs> Bonga <rare. laughs> Okay, so let's take a look at semicolons, guys. When do we use semicolons? Okay, semicolon is the period, comma, not the period, period, because period, period is the colon. Okay, semicolon, that is period and a comma. So rule number one for semicolons, they are used for clauses connected by coordinating conjunctions, okay? When phrases either dependent or independent are connected by coordinating conjunctions, use a semicolon to connect them. Here's an example. The assignment is extra credit, semicolon, what's the coordinating conjunction here? However, okay? However, comma, we still need to hand it in. 
The assignment is extra credit, semicolon, however, comma, we still need to hand it in. Another one, we are required to submit a copy, semicolon, or provide two studies. If there is a coordinating conjunction there, however, albeit, although, there you go, fanboys, then there should always be a semicolon before it. And then after that, you can put a comma. Okay? All right. All right. Uh, Rick Mondi, I think something's wrong with you. What's wrong with me, Rick Mondi? I am so sorry if you think that way, my love. Pardon me if you think that way. That's not my fault. <laughs> okay. So what else? <clears throat> Rule number two. Used for independent clauses, okay? If the relation of two independent clauses is clear, let's say these two things or these two people are, or these two people have the same thing in common, okay, then you're going to be using a semicolon. Okay, so let's say John finished his homework, semicolon, Kathleen did not. So what do they have in common, guys? John and Kathleen are about to do a homework. However, John finished his and Kathleen did not. So you're going to be separating them with a semicolon. Okay, what else? Carrie ate most of the pie. Joe ate some. Okay, so Carrie ate most of the pie. Semicolon, Joe ate some. Okay, so if you're going to be looking at that, guys, if the two, okay, if the two independent clauses have similar relations to one another, then of course you're going to be using a semicolon to separate them. Okay, what else? <clears throat> Next one. If there are two clauses, one independent and one dependent, use a semicolon. Again, if there are two clauses, one independent and one dependent, use a semicolon. Okay. So, here's an example. The government is stringent, semicolon, when it comes to the welfare of the people. The government is stringent, semicolon when it comes to the welfare of the people watching from bangladesh hello hello mary nika okay mary nika hello welcome from the philippines hello okay so what else guys <clears throat> the people need to provide proof semicolon upon entering a foreign land sir joseph where's the independent clause there okay look at the first one the government is stringent can it stand on its own Yes, it can. If you're going to be looking at that, that sentence right there, that phrase right there can stand on its own. The next one is the people need to provide proof. That is an independent clause. Okay, now remember this. I'm going to tell you this and I want you to remember this. When there is an independent clause, what follows it is a semicolon, not a comma. Again, when there is an independent clause, what follows it is a semicolon and not a comma. Okay, so look at that. Look at rule number two. All right, what else? Let's take a look at the next one. Okay, what is it? I think something wrong with you. Okay, I think something is wrong with you. I believe my dear is the proper term. <laughs> okay, so what else? Rule number three. For conjunctive adverbs and transitional phrases. Okay. When we say conjunctive adverbs and transitional phrases, what are these? When two phrases are connected by, for example, for instance, that is, besides, with this, hence, thus, accordingly, furthermore, otherwise, however, therefore, you need to use a semicolon. Okay, do not forget the comma after these words. Okay, so if, if two words, okay, or two clauses are, okay, are following, are, are connected by these, okay, which are the transitional phrases, that should be a semicolon before the transitional phrase and not a comma. Here's an example, guys. <clears throat> the frontliners worked hard, semicolon, nevertheless, comma, it is onerous for them to curtail the virus. Again, one more. The frontliners worked hard, semicolon, nevertheless, comma, it is onerous for them to curtail the virus. Here's another one. 
many people are focusing on amassing their laurels. Semicolon. Otherwise, comma, there will be no development. Okay. So remember, guys, in this rule, which is rule number three, if there is a transitional phrase, okay? What are the transitional phrases again, Sir Joseph? These are the pink ones, my loveys. Okay? So look at that. For example, for instance, and so on and so forth, then it will be... Uh, it will be before, the semicolon will be before the transitional cue, and then there will be a comma after that. Okay, so look at that. The front liners work hard, comma, nevertheless, semicolon, it is onerous for them to curtail the virus. All righty. So what else? Okay. Let's move on to the next one. Rule number four. Okay. There should be no three comma scene in a paragraph except for seriousness. This is a common mistake of the students who are taking the IELTS examination is that they're going to be writing a long paragraph right there, like this long of a paragraph, and then they're going to be putting like four commas together, and that's not a series. Okay, a series is, re is related to one another, whereas they're just separating it with commas, 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 commas. So, guys. There should be no three commas seen together on the exam. Okay? So, if there are three commas in your paragraph, what I would want you to remember is one of them should be a semicolon. It's either semicolon, comma, comma, or comma, semicolon, comma. There you go. Or comma, comma, semicolon, sentence period. Okay, so sir, how will I know where to put the semicolon on that? So you just have to find the independent clause, the sentence that can stand on its own. When you found the independent clause, automatically the semicolon will follow that. Okay, so here's an incorrect way to write this down. Look at this one. People nowadays are focusing on success, comma, they are willing to go abroad, comma, even if they are alone, comma, they have strong will. Look at that. There's just too, there are just too many commas for this one. One of them should be a semicolon. So let's replace it. Let's look for the independent clause, okay? What's the independent clause here? People nowadays are focusing on success. Wow, that's an independent clause. So I will use a semicolon after that. Okay, people nowadays are focusing on success. They are willing to go abroad even if they are alone. They have strong will. Look at that, right? These are, this is a way for you to arrange it, okay? Remember the ultimate rule of semicolons. There should be no three commas seen together in a paragraph. If you have written a long paragraph and there are three commas and you know that you're not stating a series or enumerating, okay, then one of them should become a semicolon. So, Sir Joseph, how can I find again the semicolon? Okay, just find the independent clause. Oh, now I know. Okay, for Grace, uh, after nang abroad, which one? They are willing to go abroad. No, my dear. They are willing to go abroad. It's not a complete thought because they, yeah, you started with a pronoun, okay? All right. <clears throat> so here it is, right? That's how you're going to be using comma and semicolon for your examination. All right. You're welcome, Grace, my love. Okay, so the most important rule for tonight. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. Okay, this is from Psalms 32.8. Whenever you feel that you're alone, whenever you feel that you are down, or whenever you feel that the world is out to get you, you have to remember that the Lord promised that he will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. Plus, he will counsel you with his loving eye on you. Okay, so guys, okay, so let's just pray for the people tonight who have attended our discussion here. Heavenly Father, we'd like to thank you for another opportunity, Lord God, to share for the students when it comes to their learnings on their preparation for the IELTS exam. Lord, 
you know the will of their hearts and you know that they need this examination for them to become the person that they are meant to be. Lord, guide them and bless them and give them the right amount of knowledge and wisdom for them to pass their examination. Lord, I thank you for the lives of the admins of IFNG, Lord God. I thank you for Sir Jeffrey, Mom Gladys, Sir, Sir Marvin, for always reaching out for the students and guiding them. Lord, protect them and bless them as well. Lord, I pray for the students who are preparing for the exam and I pray for the students who are about to become new students of elite intellect line. Lord, provide for them and bless them. And this we pray and claim in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so God bless you guys. Guilty for long sentences here. And now I learned wonders of semicolon. Yes, guys. Thank you guys so much for learning with us for tonight, guys. Thank you so much, Mama D. God bless you, Mama D. Cares. Mama D. Cares, guys. Okay, so next week, Friday, we will be discussing something important for your IELTS preparation. So it's still a secret. However, you're welcome, Libin. I will be telling Mom Gladys the discussion this and Mr. M the discussion this Monday. Okay, it would be something that would be momentous for those of you guys. By the way, guys, for those of you who want to avail for Elite Extra, please do send a message on our Facebook page right now and avail of the exclusive IFNG discount. Just type IFNG Jeffrey, IFNG Gladys, IFNG Marvin, or IFNG uh, Mr. M, IFNG Deadpool, or IFNG GL to avail your exclusive 1,500 discount for our enrollment for Elite Extra. If you are a student who has encountered the examination before and you would want to go the extra mile okay and promise that this will be your last take on the exam please enroll at elite extra and i'll see you in class very soon okay thank you guys so much for joining us tonight thank you so much okay so before i return uh before i return the floor to our admins right there again in behalf of sir jello sir uh, sir jello mom zaya and mom tanya this is sir joseph your mama dragon sending my love to you from the philippines i'll see you again next friday same time same place here at ifng god bless you everyone i love you all bye guys Thank you so much, Mom Gladys, Mr. M, Sir Jeffrey. See you next next Friday. Thank you very much, Sir Joseph. See you guys next Friday. God bless everyone.